Hello again everyone. I hope you are all doing well today. So today we're going to cover exercise 8 and exercise 8 talks about cell division. So we're going to talk about both types of cell division and that is mitosis and meiosis. And we're going to talk about how they are similar and how they are different. All right, so let's get started. Cell cycle is a series of events that take place from the time a cell is created until it divides into two new cells. So it it's the life of a cell from when it was first created until it divides and creates the next generation of the cells. Okay, so for somatic cells, somatic cells, the, the prefix soma means body, so our somatic cells are our body cells. And this uh, cell cycle consists of three main phases, and that is interphase, mitosis, which is the nuclear division, and then cytokinesis, which is the cytoplasmic uh, division. Okay, so let's, uh, we're going to further break it down. So these are, these right here are the three main phases, and then each one of these phases gets broken down into smaller phases. Okay, so starting off with the first one, we have the interphase. All right, interphase is subdivided into three phases. And we call these three phases the G1 phase, which stands for GAP1, the S phase, which stands for synthesis, and the, and the G2 phase, which stands for GAP2. Okay, so in the G1 phase, the GAP1, this is the first growth phase. So this is when the cell has just been created. It's a brand new cell, and this brand new cell was created by the parent cell dividing in half. So this daughter cell, this brand new cell, is half the size of the original one. So it goes into this first growth phase, where it is going to start to grow a little bit larger. So it's going to get larger and it's going to start carrying out all of the chemical reactivities, uh, reactions that it was supposed to. Okay, so in G1, the cell starts metabolizing. It starts doing whatever it was created to do. All right, so if it's a uh, endocrine system cell, it starts producing its hormones. If it's a muscle cell, it's contracting. If, if it's a skin cell, it's producing melanin and keratin and whatever. So it's doing the metabolism that it was created to do, okay? So after G1 phase, it goes into the S phase, and S stands for synthesis, okay? And the word synthesis means to make something. Remember, it means to make something. All right, so in the synthesis phase, the chromosomes make an identical copy. So it starts synthesizing identical copies of all of the chromosomes so that we have two complete sets of chromosomes. All right, so it makes identical copies. So I, I, it make, it's uh, making an identical copy of the chromosomes. So genetically, this copy is identical to the original ones. Okay, so then it moves into the G2 phase, which stands for GAP2. Okay, GAP2 is a second growth phase. So this is where the cell is going to grow some more, and it is going to start getting ready for cell division. Okay, so it's going to grow. It is continuing to metabolize, so it's still doing whatever it was supposed to do, still carrying out chemical reactions, but it's growing a little bigger as it is preparing for cell division. Okay, so because this cell is going to divide into two cells, it goes into another growth phase so that it can get a little bit bigger it has a little bit more cytoplasm it has a little it has more organelles because all the organelles have to divide and create more of them so that when it divides it's got enough to divide up between two cells okay so after interphase which consists of the g1 the s and the g2 then the cell cycle moves into mitosis okay so mitosis is the division of the nucleus okay the nucleus, not the whole cell, just the nucleus. All right, so the mitosis uh, phase gets subdivided into five phases, and we call this prophase, metaphase, I'm sorry, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. All right, so you do need to know the order of these phases, and to remember it, um, just remember the acronym PPMAT. Okay, when I was first learning mitosis, we didn't have this prometaphase. This prometaphase has been recently added in the last decade or so. Uh, it used to just be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Uh, so the acronym used to be PMAT. So you just always remembered PMAT was the order. But then they, uh, they decided that there is a phase in between prophase and metaphase where um, the spindle apparatus attaches to the kinetochore fibers, and they said that um, it deserved its own phase. So they put in, since it happened in between prophase and metaphase, they put in this phase right here, 
prometaphase. All right, so now we have the acronym PPMAT to remember the order. Okay, so um, after mitosis, then mitosis is the nuclear division. So this is where mitosis is where the nucleus divided to create two nuclei in that one cell. So now this one cell has the two nuclei, and now we have to divide the rest of the cell. And that's what we call cytokinesis. Okay, if you break down the word cytokinesis, cyto is referring to the cytoplasm. And kinesis is movement. So this is the phase where the cytoplasm moves apart and separates into two separate cells. All right, so cyto, cytokinesis phase, or the C phase, is the division of the cytoplasm. So this phase actually begins at the end of anaphase. So it starts happening at the end of anaphase. It's, it's happening at the same time that telophase is happening. And then after telophase is finished, then cytokinesis completes itself and uh, completely divides the cell into two. Okay, so this is a um, graph to show you all of these different cycles. Okay, so this is where we have a brand new cell. Okay, so this is a new cell starting right here. All right, so the cell enters into interphase. So all of this right here is interphase. All right, so an interphase gets, it divide, gets broken down into gap one phase, which is a brand new cell. It's little, so it goes into the first growth phase and starts metabolizing. Then it moves into the synthesis phase, and synthesis is where we replicate or duplicate all of the DNA. We make a second copy of the DNA. And then it goes into the G2 phase where it's going to grow and prepare for the cell division. The, the organelles are going to divide and get ready for cell division. Okay, so you can see here the cell spends most of its time in interphase. Okay, uh, and this pie chart really is, it's exaggerated. Mitosis is even a smaller percentage of the life than this. A cell spends most of its life in interphase where it is metabolizing and carrying out the functions that it was created to do. Okay, so then it gets ready for cell division. So it goes into mitosis. Mitosis is nuclear division. So that nucleus goes through the phases of prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. All right, so during the end of anaphase, you can see these dots right here representing during the end of anaphase, we have cytokinesis beginning. So cytokinesis begins at the end of anaphase, it overlaps telophase, and then it completes after telophase is finished. Okay, so after cytokinesis is finished, we now have two new daughter cells, and both of these two daughter cells are going to enter into their own life cycle or cell cycle. All right, so some terminology you need to know before we get into the cell division. You need to know what a chromatid is, okay? A chromatid is the two strands of chromosomes that are genetically identical, okay? So these were made during the, nth, the S phase of interphase, okay? So this is what was synthesized during the S phase. Okay. All right. So uh, these two chromatid are genetically identical. They're identical copies of each other, and they are going to be stuck together. And they are going to be stuck together by a structure called the centromere. So the centromere is what holds these two chromatids together. Okay. So you have the original chromosome, and then during the S phase, it synthesized an exact copy. So these two are genetically identical. It has the exact same gene coding, and it's held together by the centromere, okay? So the chromatids are each one of these, okay? And we call those sister chromatids. Sister chromatids means they're identical, and they are held together by the sticky spot that is the centromere. Okay, so animal cells, okay, remember when we're talking about animal cells, how the characteristics that it has, animal cells have these structures called centrioles. Plant cells don't have them, but animal cells do. So the centrioles are small microtubule organizing centers. That's what MTOC stands for, microtubule organizing center. 
All right, so this is a, a organelle that is composed of microtubules. So these little stra uh, strands right here, these are microtubules, okay? And so it's composed of nine triplets of them. So this is a triplet. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine triplets, and then one in the center. All right, so um, it, it is arranged in this tubule structure that looks um, it's like cylindrical, and they're found in pairs. Okay, so um, so they're found in pairs that are, are positioned perpendicular to each other. So you can see this one goes in this direction, and this one is perpendicular to that. All right, so each one of these is a centriole. So this is a centriole, and this is a centriole. Together, they make up the structure that we call a centrosome. All right, so let's talk about the phases of mitosis. Okay, so remember the acronym PPMAT. Okay, so we're gonna start off with each one of the phases. It always goes in that order. And in each one of these um, slides, I've given you a way that I used to use to help me remember it. Okay, so the first stage of mitosis is prophase. So if you look at this prefix pro, pro means first or before. Okay, so in prophase, this is the first phase that happens before all the other phases. All right, so that's where the name prophase comes from. So when I was learning this, I associated the PR in the word prophase with the word preparing. So in this phase, everything that prepares the cell for cell division happens. Okay, in animal cells, the centrioles replicate copies and the two copied pairs migrate to the opposite poles. So here you have a pair of centrioles, a centrosome, and it made a copy, and you have a second pair, and then this, this pair starts migrating to this side, and this one starts migrating to this side. As it is separating, these spindle fibers right here are appearing. So the spindle fibers appear in between the centrioles as they're migrating. All right, the chromatin is condensing into chromosomes, okay? So chromatin and chromosomes are the same structure, and y'all used to hearing the word chromosomes, and we call them chromosomes more commonly because in their chromosome phase is when we can see them under the microscope. When they're in the chromatin phase, we can't see them. All right, so chromatin are long and thin. If you remember that rhyme, chromatin are long and thin, it helps you to remember the difference between chromatin and chromosomes. It's the same structure, it's just a different state of existence. And the chromatin phase, it's their thread-like strands, okay, and they're long, so they would be all tangled up and hard to sort. So because they're tangled up and hard to sort, our cells condense them and make them into chromosomes. So they start spinning around and they condense and become tight little coils and that's when we call them chromosomes. All right, so it's the same structure, just different state of existence. When they're tightly coiled and they become thicker, we can see them under the microscope. So uh, we call them chromosomes. So uh, during prophase at, and during um, the G2 phase of uh, interphase and during prophase, they're doing this. They're, they're spinning around, they're condensing. Okay, so when they are condensing to, to, into their chromosomes, they are still paired as sister chromatids. So it's the original and the copy, and they're stuck together. Okay, all right, so also the nuclear membrane begins to break down. We have to separate these chromosomes. In order to separate the chromosomes, we're going to get rid of this nuclear membrane. So the nuclear membrane starts to fall apart. Okay. Um, and then that nucleolus disappears. The nucleolus is that dark spot in the center of the nucleus that makes ribosomes. At this stage of the cell cycle, we don't need ribosomes. So that disintegrates and falls apart, okay? So all of this happens in prophase. Prophase is preparing for cell division, okay? So the centrioles migrate, the spindle apparatus forms, the chromatin become chromosomes and become visible. The mucor membrane disintegrates and the nucleolus disintegrates. Okay, so uh, a student sent me this years ago, this cartoon. It says, dude, mitosis starts in five minutes. I can't believe you're not condensed yet. And I love this meme because it shows the difference between chromosomes and chromatin. This right here is chromatin. Okay, so in this phase, 
okay it's a big jumbled mess okay this is not easy to sort this would get tangled up and knotted and break when we have cell division we don't want our chromosomes to break that's our genetic information okay so we need it to stay intact and in, in, in the right order so uh, this is not a good phase for cell division whereas this is okay this is where this has spun around and become condensed so we have one original and we have its copy and it's stuck together at the centromere. So now we have two chromo chromosomes that are identical copy and we can separate them and that's what the process of mitosis does. It breaks them apart and it separates them and makes two separate cells out of these two uh, copies of the chromosomes. So this illustration shows you the difference between chromatin and chromosomes. Okay, so after um, prophase and, and like I said this phase was just recently added in the last few decades so the it is called pro metaphase because it happens in between prophase and metaphase okay and so that's how I remember it is the word tells you what it is okay so it happens in between prophase and metaphase so in prophase we had uh, these migrating and the spindle apparatus forming and so after the spindle apparatus forms these kinetic core fibers have to attach to the centromeres so they become attached okay so this one attaches here and this one attaches here okay so as each one of these are attaching this is called the prometaphase okay so they each att it's attaching to each side of the sister chromatid so that it can be pulled apart okay then it goes into metaphase the way i remember metaphase met meeting okay so in metaphase the chromosomes meet in the middle okay so all of the sister chromatids line up in the center of the cell and we call the center of the cell the metaphase plate sometimes it's called the equatorial plate because it's kind of like the equator of the earth it's across the center so um but it's it's real name is the metaphase plate but quite often it's called the equatorial plate but this is a three-dimensional plate and the, all the chromosomes line up at the center of it okay so we call this metaphase because they are meeting in the middle and they line up in the center of the cell okay now under the microscope it doesn't look quite this neat because remember this is a three-dimensional cell so and our cells have 46 chromosomes so in under the microscope they're all piled up so you've got some in front of this and some behind this so it's all piled up and it makes this a uh, big jumbled mess um, that's just like all stacked up in the center of the cell so under the microscope it doesn't look as neat as this picture shows it but they are all lined up in the center of the cell okay so then we move to the next phase anaphase remember the a in anaphase stands for the word away so in anaphase the centromeres are pulled apart okay so the centromeres separate and the spindle fibers attached to them begin to shorten and when they shorten they pull that particular chromatid to the opposite side okay so right here this chromosome broke apart and as this fiber is shortening it's pulling this one to this side as this fiber is shortening it's pulling this one to this side so as these shorten these get further apart so these are moving all the way to this side this one these are moving all the way to this side so they are separating and moving away from each other okay another uh, thing that happens during this phase is cytokinesis begins okay so cytokinesis remembers the division of the cytoplasm okay so you can see right here this slight indention here and here is where this cell is beginning to form uh, beginning to go through cytokinesis and that happens at the end of anaphase okay so then it moves into telophase and the way I remember telophase the T in telophase stands for two all right so now uh, we the, in anaphase the chromosomes have separated and moved to the opposite side so now we have to make two new nuclei out of it now we got to make a nucleus out of those clusters of chromosomes so in anaphase all of these moved over here and clustered and all of these moved to this side and clustered okay so everything that happened in prophase the opposite happens in telophase because prophase was getting ready for cell division 
and telophase is ending it, so the opposite happens. So in prophase, our chromatin condensed and became chromosomes. Well, now this is becoming a new cell, and it's going to have to function. And in order to function, it has to be in the chromatin phase, the long and thin phase, so that it can be read and used. So the chromatin, I'm sorry, the chromosomes un uncoil and become thread-like strands again. They become chromatin. Okay, all right, the spindle fibers, they appeared in prophase to do the moving, but now the moving is done, so it's over, so these are going to disappear. So these spindle fibers start to break down and go away because we don't need them anymore. All right, now we have these clusters of chromosomes, we got to make a new nucleus out of it. Okay, so the nuclear membranes start to reappear, they start reforming. Okay, so uh, all of those uh, phospholipid molecules start lining up to create the membrane again. And then that nucleolus reappears. The nucleolus, remember, is what makes the ribosomes. Well, these are going to be new cells, they're going to need proteins. And in order to produce proteins, we need the ribosomes. Um, so that nucleolus, that dark spot, starts to reappear. Okay, and I know it's kind of hard to see in this picture, but it, there's little dots right here that are starting to reappear, and that's representing the nucleolus reappearing. Okay, and then we have our cytokinesis continuing. So that indentation is getting a little bit deeper as it overlaps the telophase phase. So you can see the uh, cytoplasm division is getting deeper here. Okay, all right, so. Um, all of that is telophase. Uh, all of that, oh, sorry, is mitosis. So uh, mitosis consists of those five phases, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And that is nuclear division. We took one nucleus and we made two nuclei out of it. Okay, so now we have this one cell with two nuclei in it. We have to finish off that division by separating the cytoplasm. So then it goes into cytokinesis. Okay, so Cytokinesis is the movement of the cytoplasm. Okay, so that is separating the cytoplasm into two different cells. So this does happen differently for plant and animal cells because plant and animal cells are different. Okay, so what I've been showing y'all was all the animal cells. And animal cells form cleavage furrow. Okay, the word cleavage means indentation. Okay, a woman's cleavage is the indentation between her breast, and you can remember that because this kind of looks like a pair of breasts, right? Okay, so the word cleavage furrow means the indentation that is pushing in the cytoplasm and separating it. And what causes this is around the cell, we have these protein fibers, these actin fibers that are wrapped around the cell and they condense. And as they condense, it's getting tighter and tighter, and this indentation here is getting deeper and deeper until it pinches off. All right, so to kind of get a visualization of it, think about if you had a big balloon and you wrapped a belt around it and then you started tightening that belt, okay? And that's kind of what's happening here. We wrapped, it had wrapped a belt of protein and those proteins got tighter and tighter and pinched off the center. All right, so that just pinches off until we have two separate sides and then we have two separate animal cells. Okay, but plant cells can't do that because plant cells have a cell wall. Okay, so cell walls can't pinch off because they're made of uh, cellulose that doesn't pinch. Okay, so a cell, a plant cell has to form what's called a cell plate. Okay, and what a cell plate is, is the, the cell goes through the whole process of mitosis very similar to animal cells. Okay, it goes through the PPMAT process. Um, the only difference is it doesn't have the centrioles, but everything else happens pretty much the same way. It just doesn't have centrioles. So after all that happens, then down the center of the cell at the metaphase plate, we have vesicles that line up. And those vesicles start secreting the the uh, molecules that make up cellulose. Okay, so this they start secreting cellulose molecules, and those cellulose molecules start forming bonds, and then they start to stick together, and then they eventually form a new cell wall. Okay, and that will divide the two cells into two separate cells. Okay, okay so this right here shows you a picture of plant cells. This is plant cells actually under the microscope and it shows you all the different phases. All right, so these cells right here are in the phase of inter interphase. Okay, so they have not started cell division yet. And you can tell that because you can see that all of the um, this gray 
that gray is the chromatin, okay? They're in their chromatin stage where they're long and thin. Remember, chromatin are long and thin. Uh, so they're in their chromatin phase, okay? And so that's all blurry. We can't really see the individual chromosomes because they're just a big pile of threads, okay? So these two are interphase because we can't see individual chromosomes yet. Okay, um, as we're moving into this one right here, this is beginning of prophase. So you can see, start to see right here, you can start to see all these little white gaps, and that's because the chromatin are coiling up and becoming these dark little lines. So all these dark lines are the chromosomes that are condensing. Okay, so we can start to see the individual chromosomes. So this is prophase. Here it's a little bit further along, so you can see these individual chromosomes. And you can see them here as well. Okay, so all of these are chromosomes that are now becoming visible. All right, so all of that is prophase because it is preparing for cell division. The chromatin are becoming chromosome, and the nuclear envelope is starting to fall apart. So you can see these little gaps in the um, nuclear membrane. Okay, so then it moves into metaphase. And we can't see prometaphase under the microscope because we can't actually see the kinetochore fibers. We can't, it's not high powered enough to see the kinetochore fibers. So um, we don't, under the microscope, we don't identify prometaphase. So this is metaphase. Remember, metaphase meet in the middle. Okay, so they are lining up across the equator of the plate, the metaphase plate. Okay, of the cell, I'm sorry. Uh, so, you, and you can see it's a pile, okay? So you can see this is a pile of chromosomes lined up across the center of the cell. Same here, they're lined up across the center of the cell. All right, so metaphase meet in the middle. So then it starts to move into anaphase, okay? Anaphase away, okay? So you can tell here that these are, all of these are being pulled to this side of the cell and all of these are being pulled to this side of the cell, okay? So they're being pulled away from each other to the opposite side, okay? Now this one is overlapping. This is anaphase and it's the end of anaphase, the beginning of telophase. So you can still, you can see some of them are still being drugged. So some, some of them are still being pulled to the other side, but you can also see that they're starting to cluster. Okay, so you can see it's starting to cluster here. So uh, this is the end of anaphase and the beginning of telophase. So in telophase, you can see that there's a cluster of chromosomes and they're uncoiling. You can see that it's becoming gray again. They're uncoiling and becoming chromatin. And then that nuclear envelope is forming around it. And so you have these two nuclei and then you can see the metaphase plate forming right here in the middle between the two. So that is telophase creating two new nuclei um, and dividing it into two separate cells. Okay, so that's plant cells. Now this right here is a picture of the onion root tip under the microscope, sorry. Um, so this right here, Okay, all of these, first of all, let's start off with interphase, okay? These are all interphase, okay? Because you can see the, nucleo the nucleolus is still intact. They're blurry because they're chromatin. So all of these are interphase, okay? So we have lots of them in interphase right now, okay? This one right here is prophase because it is preparing for cell division. You can see that you can start to see little white spots in here, okay? And that's because the chromatin are condensing and becoming chromosomes. Okay, and then it moves into metaphase because they are meeting in the middle. Okay, they're all lined up right here. They're piling up at the center of the cell. Okay, so that's metaphase. And then, then it moves into anaphase. So you can see right here that these are being pulled to this side and these are being pulled to this side. So this is anaphase. They're moving away from each other to the opposite side. And then this one right here is telophase, two new nuclei, because you've got this cluster and this cluster. And you can see this blurry area right here that is our new cell plate forming. Okay, so it is uh, getting ready to uh, go into cytokinesis and divide that into two separate cells. Okay, all right, so this is the splashula under the slide. Okay, this one right here is um, animal cells. Okay, so. Again, we have interphase. We have lots of interphase. We have all of these that are blurry. Um, not that one. Um, that one is interphase. 
Okay, this one here is interphase. All of them that are blurry are interphase. All right, so uh, here you, can, you can't see the chromosomes because they're in the chromatin phase. Then it moves into prophase. We have lots of prophases here. This is prophase because you can see these little white gaps because the chromatin are becoming chromosomes. All right, so we have a lot of them that are in prophase. So all of these right here are prophase. This one's prophase. This one's prophase. All right, so we have lots of them that are in a prophase phase. Okay, then it moves into metaphase, meet in the middle. So in um, metaphase, you can see they're lined up at the center of the cell. So they're all lined up right here. And you can see these lines on the side. Okay, so you can actually see the spindle apparatus on, uh, on these cells. Okay, so that is metaphase, meeting in the middle. Okay, then anaphase, anaphase is away. So you can see these are being pulled this way and these are being pulled this way. All right, so anaphase away. And then this is telophase. Okay, we have two clusters of chromosomes. All right, and right here is cytokinesis that is um, beginning. Uh, it's in the process. It began at the end of anaphase, uh, but it's, it's in... Um, it's happening here in telophase. So this is getting deeper and deeper. So this is going to keep getting deeper and deeper until it pinches off into two separate cells. All right, so that one is telophase. Okay, so all of that was mitosis. Okay, so mitosis creates two daughter cells that are identical to the original parent cell because we copy the DNA, then we divide it and gave one copy to each of the daughter cells. Okay, so uh, it is two daughter cells that are genetically identical to the original cell, the parent cell that produced them. All right, so for mitosis is used for all of our body growth, all of our repairing. Like when we get um, a cut on our skin, our cells go through mitosis to create more skin cells. And these skin cells have to be identical to the original skin cell. Okay, so they are genetically identical to the original parent. Okay, so it's a different type of cell division that um, then what is going to produce our gametes, our sex cells. All right, so um, mitosis happens in all of our body cells. Every one of our body cells grows and reproduces by mitosis, except our gametes, okay? The only cells in our body that undergoes a different type of cell division is the uh, germline cells of the reproductive organs, okay? Okay, so the germline cells of our reproductive organs, the germline cells of the ovaries and the germline cells of the testes undergo a different type of cell division. And they have to undergo a different type of cell division because we have to have half the number of chromosomes. All right, so this right here is showing you fertilization, okay? So we have the egg from mom and we have the sperm from dad. And these two unite at fertilization to create the first cell of a new organism, the first cell of the offspring. Okay, so this first cell of the offspring is what we call the zygote. And the zygote is a diploid cell, just like all of our body cells. Now, when we talk about mitosis, those were all diploid cells. They had two sets of chromosomes. One came from dad, one came from mom. Okay, so this zygote is diploid. It got one set from mom and one set from dad. Okay, all right, so in order to have a diploid cell here, and for humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. I don't know why it does that. Okay, so it's 23 pairs of chromosomes, and those 23 pairs of chromosomes equals a total of 46 chromosomes. All right, so we have a total of 46 chromosomes. 23 came from mom, 23 came from dad. All right, so mom's egg only had 23, okay? And that 23 is what we call haploid, okay? So mom's egg had 23 chromosomes, and dad's sperm had 23 chromosomes, so it was also haploid. All right, so the egg and the sperm come together to create the first diploid cell that has 46 chromosomes for humans, okay? All right, so the egg and the sperm have to be produced by a different type of cell division because remember mitosis creates cells that are identical to the original. So when this one undergoes mitosis, it's going to create more cells identical to it, more cells that have 46 chromosomes in it. So the egg and the sperm have to be created by a different type of cell division so that they only have 23 instead of 46 chromosomes. That different type of cell division is called meiosis. Okay. So 
So um, it's pronounced meiosis. Um, I often say meiosis just because when I was studying in, in college, I used to, in my head, call it meiosis so that I could distinguish it from mitosis because meiosis and mitosis sound so similar. All right, so, uh, but it is pronounced meiosis. So meiosis is a form of cell division that leads to the production of gametes. So meiosis produces gametes only. Okay, so meiosis only produces egg and sperm for humans. It doesn't produce any other cell in our body, just our gametes. Okay, so our gametes are haploid, which means they only have half the chromosome, one set of chromosomes. It has half the number. Okay, so um, the two gametes, which are haploid, join together at fertilization and they create the zygote. And the zygote is the first cell and it is diploid because it has two sets of chromosomes. It got one from the egg and one from the sperm. Okay, so this right here shows you the cycle of cell division. Okay, so inside the germline cells of the testes for the male and the germline cells of the ovary for the female, these cells are undergoing meiosis and they are producing haploid cells okay and haploid cells we abbreviate as 1n which means one set of chromosomes okay so the egg has one set of chromosomes and the sperm has one set of chromosomes so these are haploid cells so at fertilization the sperm fertilizes the egg and now we have two sets of chromosomes now we have a diploid cell okay and that cell is called the zygote all right, so then this zygote cell starts dividing. It starts rapid cell division, all right? We start rapidly dividing by mitosis, all right? Because this has 46 chromosomes, and it is going to divide and create two cells. This one has 46. It's going to divide by mitosis and create two cells that have 46, okay? So these cells have all the same genetic information that this one had, okay? And then these two cells undergo mitosis again and create four cells, okay? Again, these four cells, these two divided and created cells identical to them. So these also have 46 chromosomes, okay? All right, so mitosis cr creates daughter cells identical to it. So if these have 46, these have 46. These four cells undergo mitosis again and create eight, and all eight of these have 46. And then those eight go through and create 16, and then 32, and then 64, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. All right, so it is going to continue to divide over and over and over again by mitosis, okay? And that is going to create the embryo. And that little tiny embryo is going to continue to divide by mitosis until it creates the newborn baby. That newborn baby is going to grow from a newborn to a toddler to a child to a teenager to an adult all by mitosis, okay? All by creating more body cells that have the same number of chromosomes. So it's going to all be done by mitosis. And then um, the reproductive organs are, of this child is going to, if it's a male, the, the um, germline cells of the testes will start producing sperm and germline testes of the ovaries for the female will start producing the eggs. And those are the only cells in the entire body that are going to undergo the meiosis process. Okay, everything else, all of this division, all of this growth is by mitosis. Okay. Okay, let's talk about meiosis. Meiosis is a, a little more complicated than mitosis was. All right, so in meiosis, we have what's called homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes, homo means the same. And these are chromosomes that are coding for the same genetic characteristic. They are not the same genetically. They are coding for the same characteristics at the same location, which is what we call the loci. So the loci is the... Um, the address of where we would find a particular gene. Okay, so um, with our homologous chromosomes, we inherited one of them from our mom and one of them from our father. Okay, so one from mom, one from dad, the pair together is what we call homologous chromosomes. For short, we call it homologs. All right, so looking at a picture of what homologous chromosomes are, this is the chromosome, and it could be whatever number it is. Like, like I said, we have 40, 46 of them, so we have 23 pairs. So um, this could be pair number 
for example, maybe this is three and this, I'm just making this up. Okay, so this is number three and this is number three. So we inherited a number three from mom and we inherited a number three from dad. Okay, so if these are homologous chromosomes, homo meaning the same, they're coding for the same genetic traits in the same uh, positions. Okay, so for example, if the genes right here code for hair color, the genes right here code for hair color on the homolog. If the genes right here code for eye color, the genes in the exact same location code for eye color in the, in the homolog, okay? If these code for skin color, they code for skin color in the other one. So they're coding for the same genetic characteristic, okay? They do not necessarily have the same genes, okay? So the one we inherited from mom could have coded for blonde hair, but we inherited one from dad that coded for brown hair. The one we inherited from mom coded for blue eyes. The one we inherited from dad coded for brown eyes. The one we inherited from mom coded for fair skin. The one we inherited from dad coded for dark skin. So these are different genes, okay? Different genes, but, they're lo but the characteristic is located on the same position and that's why they're called homologous chromosomes. Okay, so it's important that these can be different because that's what leads to all humans being different. Okay, so features of the meiosis process. So again, meiosis occurs only in the germline cells of the reproductive organs. So only the germline cells of the testes, the germline cells of the ovaries. No other cell in the body is going to undergo meiosis. Okay. So these germline cells uh, are going to be diploid in the original because they're body cells, okay? So they have 46 chromosomes. They have 23 pairs of chromosomes. But then they are going to go through the process of meiosis and they are going to create the gametes that are haploid, okay? So the germline cells start off diploid and then they go through meiosis process and create haploid gametes. All right, so the meiosis process includes replication, so it copies all the DNA just like mitosis did. So, but it has one replication followed by two rounds of division. Okay, so we have round one that we call meiosis one and round two that we call meiosis two. All right, so this is an overview of what happens in the meiosis process. We start off with a germline cell, okay? So these are the cells that line the testes or line the ovaries, okay? These are diploid cells. They have 23 pairs, okay? For a total of 46 chromosomes for humans. All right, so this cell is going to replicate, okay? And it's gonna produce exact copies of all of these chromosomes, okay? So it produces exact copies and they get stuck together as sister chromatids. Okay, in the process of the first cell division, so it has one replication, two divisions, and that's why it ends up haploid. But we have this one replication here, and then it goes to the first set of divisions, and that the division uh, phases, and that's called meiosis one. Okay, so meiosis one is gonna separate the homologous pairs. Okay, so this one and this one are homologous pairs. Okay, because this one and this one were, was a homologous pair. They're coding for the same genetic traits. Okay, so again, if this one coded for high, um, I'm sorry, hair, eyes, and skin, this one codes for hair, eyes, and skin. These are homologs. They replicated exact copies of each other. Okay, and then they're stuck together by uh, centromeres. All right, so the first meiosis process separates these homologous pairs. So this one goes to one cell, this one goes to the other cell. These two are homologous pairs, okay? This one and this one was a homologous pair. They coded for the same characteristics. They replicated copies, and then they separated into two separate cells, okay? Now, notice this one has pink in it, and this one has blue in it, and that's a process called crossover, okay? And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so, all right, so this first cell division separated homologous pairs, okay? So meiosis one homologous pairs are separated. So these cells are now haploid because it only has one of the homolog, okay? So this was the homologous pair, one went here, one went here. So these cells only have one of the homologous pairs. So these are considered haploid cells. So then these cells go through a second round of division that's called the meiosis II process, okay? 
And so in the meiosis II process, we're going to separate these two sister chromatids. So the centromere breaks, and one goes this way, and one goes this way. Okay, so that one separates into that cell, that one goes to that cell. And this one also separates, and that one goes to that cell, and that one goes to that cell. Okay, and the same thing happens in this one. These two separate and go to separate cells, and these two separate and go to separate cells. So the meiosis II process separates the sister chromatids. Okay, all right, so the end result of meiosis, we now have four daughter cells. Okay, these daughter cells are haploid because it only has one set of chromosomes. And genetically, they are all unique, okay? You can see that the colors, they're all color-coded, and every one of these are different colors, okay? So genetically, they are different, all right? So the, the end result of meiosis is four daughter cells that are all uniquely uh, unique as far as their genetic makeup. All right, so with the stages of meiosis, all right, uh, meiosis goes through two rounds of division, and both rounds consist of the same phases, the PPMAT. Okay, they go through the, the prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. All right, but it happens a little bit differently. A lot of the things are similar, but it has a few things that are different in the meiosis process. All right, so we give these numbers 1 and 2. If it's meiosis 1, it's prophase 1. If it's meiosis 2, it's prophase 2. Okay, so this number tells us whether it's the first round of division or the second round of division. So in prophase 1, all the same things happen. That happens in mitosis. The chroma, chromosomes are coiling tightly, so the chromatin coil and become chromosomes. The nuclear envelope uh, dissolves and, and disintegrates. Um, the homologous chromosomes become close, closely paired and form a synapsis. Okay, so this is different than mitosis. Okay, synapsis does not happen in mitosis. The homologous pairs come together and form a synapsis. The word synapsis means coming together. So they come together at synapsis. And then they break off and swap their genetic information. So these two came together and it broke right here and it swapped those two pieces. And then it broke again right here, and it swapped those two pieces, okay? So this is a process that we call crossover. So crossing over mixes up all the genetic information, okay? So if this one was coding for hair right here, and dad gave us a brown hair gene, and mom gave us a blue hair, blue blonde hair gene, um, then it, it's going to flip. Okay, so we're mixing up that genetic information, and that's going to lead to all four of these chromatids being genetically different. Okay, and that's a process that we call crossing over. All right, so this right here shows you synapsis. Okay, so we have the chromosome from dad, and we have the chromosome from mom. They are genetically, um, they are, they are um, homologs, meaning they are coding for the same characteristics. Okay, so um, again, if there's a code for hair color right here, there's a hair code for hair color right here. All right, so they line up gene for gene and stick together, and that's what we call synapsis. So synapsis forms a unit that we call the tetrad. Tetra means four. You can see we have one, two, three, four chromatids here, and that's where the name tetrad comes from, four chromosomes or chroma, uh, chromatids. All right, so they all stick together gene for gene, and then they start breaking, okay? So it can break right here, and it flips these two, okay? And then it can break right here, and it flips these two. And then it breaks right here, and it flips these two. So what happens is it keeps just swapping up all the genetic information, okay? And what this does is it makes all four chromatids genetically different. This one and this one will no longer be the same, and this one and this one will no longer be the same. Okay, so crossing over is a genetic recombination. It makes all the chromatids genetically unique, and it is the physical exchange of the regions of chromatids. It breaks and flips. All right, so that place where it breaks is what we call the cosmata, okay? So the cosmata is the site where it breaks, okay? So that would be right here. If it broke right here and flipped, this is the cosmata, okay? All right, so this right here is showing you another picture of it. So we have the one from dad, the one from mom. They're coding for the same genetic information, not necessarily the same gene. You can see dad might be dominant, mom's recessive. 
okay? Different genetic information, but coding for the same characteristics, okay? So they stick together, and then they break, and they swap. And what that does is it leads to every chromatid now being unique. None, none of these chromatids are identical anymore because of crossover. Okay, so then we go into prometaphase. The same thing happens. Okay, prometaphase, the spindle apparatus starts to attach to the centromeres. Okay, so it attaches to each homologous chromosome or homolog. Okay, and that's important. It is not attaching to the sister chromatids, it's attaching to the homolog. Okay, so in metaphase, one, it is lining up homologous pairs, okay? So this is a homologous pair, this is a homologous pair. It lines up at the equator, okay? It's pairing up homologous pairs and lining them up at the equator, okay? So remember, metaphase meet in the middle. Homologous pairs meet in the middle, okay? So this right here is showing you the difference between uh, how the kinetochore fibers attach in the meiosis one process or the meiosis two. In the meiosis one process, we have these kinetochore fibers that are attaching to the whole sister chromatid, the whole uh, homolog. Okay, so all of this moves this way, all of this moves this way. Okay, so it's separating the homologs. Whereas the meiosis two process is very similar to mitosis and that it attaches to each side of the centromere. So that when it pulls apart, it breaks the centromere and separates the sister chromatids. All right, so in meiosis one, we're separating homologous pairs and meiosis two, we're separating sister chromatids. All right, so this right here shows you the random arrangement at the metaphase plate. And the random arrangement is another thing that contributes to genetic diversity. Okay, all humans are different. Okay, first of all, because of crossover, because we have that genetic swap up that makes every one of the chromatids different. But then we also have random alignment. Okay, so random alignment at the metaphase plate says that this homologous pair can line up in different ways, okay? So we can have, you can see right here that this is dad, mom, dad, mom. That's one way it can line up, or it can line up dad, mom, mom, dad, okay? So that's a different arrangement. So humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, and they can line up dad and mom or mom and dad, okay? So either one can line up on either side. So to mathematically figure out the possibilities of how many different arrangements can we have, we have two different arrangements, dad, mom, or mom, dad, two different arrangements. And we have 23 pairs that are arranged in one of these two ways, okay? So to figure out the mathematical possibilities of how many different ways they can line up for a human, for an egg or a sperm, we have over 8 million possibilities, okay? So 8 million possibilities. Uh, of how they're going to line up. And this is another thing that leads to genetic diversity. This is another reason why no two brothers or no two sisters are identical genetically, unless they're identical twins. That's a whole different situation. Okay, so then we move into anaphase one. Again, anaphase is away. So we're going to um, talk about moving away, but this time, because we're talking about meiosis, we're homologous pairs moving away, okay? So again, these spindle apparatus shorten, spindle fibers shorten and pull the, that homolog that way, these pull that way and separate that homologous to that side, okay? So the homologs are going to be separated, okay? So the sister chromatids are still attached, all right? So these two are still attached, even though they're not identical anymore, they're still attached. These two are still attached, even though they're not identical anymore. Okay, then telophase, C for two, two new nuclei. Okay, so we have uh, the clusters that form on the opposite sides and we make two new nuclei out of them. Okay, all right, so that ends the first phase of meiosis, meiosis one, and then we're going to go into the meiosis two. Okay, so meiosis two more closely separates, uh, more closely uh, resembles mitosis because we're separating the sister chromatids. So then it goes through the same thing. It goes through prophase two, prometaphase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. And this time we are separating the sister chromatids, okay? So all the same things happen. So in prophase two, we have this, the centrioles migrating, the spindle apparatus forming, the nuclear, nuclear membrane dissolving. All of that's happening, okay? Same thing though, all right? In um, the chromatin are coiling to become chromosomes. Then in prometaphase, the spindle fibers attach, 
and, met and metaphase, they meet in the middle. And this time we're in meiosis two, so this time it is sister chromatids that meet in the middle. All right, then anaphase away, we separate those sister chromatids. All right, and then uh, and during telophase, and during anaphase into anaphase, we have the beginning of cytokinesis. And then in telophase, we've got cytokinesis getting deeper, getting further along, and we are going to form two new nuclei. Okay, and so uh, the nucleus is completely formed during telophase, cytokinesis finishes off after telophase, and then we have four individual daughter cells. And now we have four genetically unique daughter cells. Every one of these is different genetically because of crossover. Okay, so this right here summarizes the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Okay, so you need to know all of these differences. All right, first thing that's different is what cells actually go through this process. In mitosis, all of our body cells undergo this process. Every body cell in your body, if it is going to divide and reproduce, it divides by mitosis. Okay, so all of our skin cells, our organ cells, our bone cells, all of these are going to reproduce by mitosis. Okay, meiosis, the only cells in the entire body that is going to divide by meiosis is the germline cells of our reproductive organs. Germline cells of the testes or germline cells of the ovaries. It's the only ones. Okay. All right, the next thing you need to know is the number of cells that are produced, okay? Number of cells, read these questions carefully, okay? I can't tell you how many students tell me number of cells is 23. No, mitosis does not create 23 cells, it creates two. One cell divides into two cells, okay? Number of cells produced by meiosis is four because we have that one cell that divides into two and then each one of those divide, so we have a total of four, okay? So make sure you read the question carefully. The number of cells is two for mitosis, four for meiosis. All right, chromosome count. Mitosis creates diploid cells, okay? And diploid cells, the chromosome count is 23 pairs, for a total of 46 chromosomes. All right, meiosis creates four haploid cells. So these only have 23 chromosomes in them, okay? And then the last difference is genetic information. For mitosis, we have parent cell that produces exact copies of the DNA, and then it divides into two cells. So the daughter cells are genetically identical to the original parent that created them. Whereas in meiosis, we have crossover that happens. So we have two cells, no two cells, I'm sorry, no two cells are genetically identical. All four are unique. So we have four unique cells genetically after meiosis happens. All right, so you do need to know all of these differences between mitosis and meiosis. Okay, so that finishes off the lecture part. So I will see you in the next video, which will cover the experiment where we will actually um, look at just the mitosis cell division under the microscope.